can expect from that plant. Mare is one of the oldest fertilizer companies in East and Central Africa. Uh, we've been in this business for the last 36 years. We've had uh, bulk blending facilities for the last 15, 20 years. We recently upgraded our bulk blending facilities. I think that must have been about five years ago. And our capacity in our coal plant now sits at 300,000 metric tons. To put it in perspective, Kenya's annual imports of fertilizer are 500,000 metric tons. We have, however, seen uh, the market grow more sophisticated. I think in the last five years, uh, not only is the market in Kenya growing, but uh, in the wider East African region and Central Africa, we have uh, expanded into eight African countries and we see the need now for upgrading the technology. So with this in mind, we signed an agreement with the Ferti plant recently. We have been having the discussions for the last one year and we're building uh, Africa's uh, second uh, NPK steam granulation plant of which uh, other than South Africa and uh, the Maghreb will be the only one in sub-Sahara Africa. And this is uh, what we have uh, signed with the Indians. It's a 16 month uh, construction period. So we see this op uh, project being operational uh, by the end of uh, next year, which is uh, last quarter, uh, 2014. You were part of the entourage that accompanied the President Kenyatta to the trip that he had in China. And uh, a couple of uh, deals have been struck between the two countries. Maybe you can tell us, you can give us an indication for Mayor, what are some of the deals that you're coming back with from China? We had a good opportunity to meet with uh, two Chinese companies. We met one of the largest traders, Sinochem. We structured a deal with them for purely on trade basis to buy NP2323 zero and sulfate of ammonia. But we also had a chance to meet with the China National Chemical and Engineering Company who have built 95% of uh, China's fertilizer plants. And what we are looking at in our upcoming MOUs to set up um, East and Central of Africa's first uh, nitrogenous plant uh, as you know, uh, NPK is um, uh, fertilizers uh, more for uh, uh, growth at the, at the root level, but crops when they get to a certain level also need nitrogen. So this will be the first nitrogen plant of its type again, and we foresee this uh, possibly in the next uh, 14 months as uh, beginning uh, uh, construction on uh, CAN, depending. Uh, depending on uh, various variables, for instance. Looking at it from the bigger picture, what impact do you see this having on agriculture, which contributes about 25% of the country's GDP, and also looking at it from a point of view in terms of production of food in the country? We'll have lower fertilizer costs. And by this, uh, right now, Kenya is at the mercy of the global markets. Even when we do bulk blending, we're bringing finished product and bulk blending. Uh, to create different formulations. But once we set up this uh, NPK steam granulation plant, we'll be buying raw materials from sources globally. And this is unprocessed raw material. So we're getting it in a much cheaper form, we're anywhere of 80 or 60 or $100 cheaper, which we then put into our production capacity. So these costs will be able to translate directly to the farmer. And that is the main uh, idea behind this uh, concept. And hopefully by driving the volumes, then we expand our market into the region. Despite the strides that you have made as a company, maybe you can give us also an indication of some of the challenges and constraints that you're facing as a fertilizer manufacturing company. One, port facilities. There's no dedicated terminal for fertilizer, as in many other countries in the world. So fertilizer imports are competing with uh, soda ash and uh, petroleum imports. And what happens is we get a huge timeout delays in Mombasa. So when you've chartered a vessel, you're, pay, you're paying for an extra 10 days uh, on average. The berths aren't available. Uh, labor is still a big challenge in the port of Mombasa. Um, we've got a double handle. Products move from Quayside to warehouses in Mombasa, then all the way up to upcountry. If we had a dedicated fertilizer terminal, we could bulk discharge fertilizer and send it straight upcountry for processing, for instance. So there are challenges there. Uh, the other main challenge we face is we haven't had a railway service for the last, uh, well, when I say we haven't had a rail service, we haven't moved uh, bulk wagons in the last 10 years. And this has a huge impact on the cost of fertilizer. Um, because when, when you look at freight charges, if one looks at the, uh, the cost of moving uh, one metric ton of fertilizer from China to Mombasa, it's on average about $70, maybe $60 from uh, the U.S. Uh, East Coast. But look at the cost of losing one uh, metric ton of fertilizer from Mombasa to Kitale. 
you're looking at $80. Or if I want to move product from Mombasa to uh, Kigali, it's $200 a metric ton. So the cost of fertilizer is eaten up by the transport component. So one of the main issues we need to address, not just Kenya, but in the region, and we're seeing this fast track movement. For instance, we've seen the new railway uh, system that's been set up within not just Kenya, but within the greater East Africa. That will vastly, that will contribute more to bringing down the prices of fertilizer, just as setting up a fertilizer factory uh, will. On the back of what you've just mentioned, that we're likely to see the cost of fertilizer coming down if we have it locally manufactured, what then will that mean for food security? And also looking at it from the contribution of agriculture, are we likely to see it contributing more to the country's GDP? The discussion has to move from input to output. In that, yes, there's a big clamor, cheap, cheap, cheap fertilizer, but is the farmer using the correct fertilizer? That's one. Is he using the correct fertilizer? Two, what is his output? Because yes, you could have the cheap fertilizer, but you're not getting the output. Because traditionally, you know, farmer could have been getting 10 bags of uh, maize per acre, and maybe if he's using fertilizer on the correct seeds, 30 bags per acre. But he's got to be using the correct uh, fertilizer. And that, that's one of the areas we're trying to move the discussion from, just cheap, cheap fertilizer to the correct fertilizer and the correct output. And I think if we start addressing some of those other areas, then we'll start seeing uh, real food security in that now farmers, yes, the, the fertilizer costs you 2,000 shillings, but where you're getting 10 bags, you're getting 30 bags. And I think that has a much greater impact than just observing the input side of things. And lastly, you mentioned that you're in eight African countries and there are three plans that you intend to have by 2015. Do you plan to also expand your foothold into more African countries? Yeah, I mean, we, we see a lot of potential. I mean, uh, right now, uh, Kenya, of course, is our traditional market. We've seen the Uganda market grow very much because of the tea sector. We've seen Burundi recently grow uh, vastly. Uh, Rwanda's growing at a, a good pace, uh, Eastern DRC. Southern Sudan, uh, we've seen uh, exports going into Southern Sudan. So we're actually earning government of Kenya revenue on this. Tanzania, we've seen good activities in Zambia and Malawi. And, uh, you know, with, with the, the new port facilities and new railway structure coming in place, we see countries like uh, Ethiopia also coming on board because uh, Ethiopia is currently landlocked and relying simply on Djibouti. We think Mombasa could uh, form a very good access for its southern uh, highlands uh, input of uh, fertilizer. Yeah.